Some parts of the science is about uh, observing the patterns and recording them and trying to follow the patterns to predict what will happen next. And this is what we can see by observing the uh, volume of the magma in the previous eruptions and the slope of the uh, rise to the maximum vol volume before the eruption. As you can see here, we see that all past eruptions in the Reykjanes Peninsula uh, in the sourcing volcanic system started with a steep rise. Then over time, the rise was gradual. It took longer. And we see even in the pattern of the earthquakes, the earthquake took longer to actually to lead to the eruptions. You see in the four, five, six patterns of the eruptions that previously we had here. And it always took longer. The reason for that, as I explained, is because the magma is a non-Newtonian fluid. As it is, it's like ketchup practically, it needs shaking. You have to shake it, and the shaking is provided by the earthquakes, by the pull of the Eurasian plate against the North, North American plate. At the plate boundary, we have these eruptions, and this is what is happening now. Due to this pool and thinning of the earth crust, uh, the mantle of the earth as a solid rises, gradually melts and forms magma, differentiates into components that we identify as magma. And I'll show you here, the volume of the magma at the moment is uh, around 20 million cubic meters. This is equal to 16 million tons or 60 megatons of the magma, the density of the basalt is practically near three. And this is what the latest update by the Icelandic Meteorological Office is announced. And as you can see, the uh, rate of the risk uh, has remained the same. The risk assessment stays the same. We have a possibility in two scenarios, uh, a delayed eruption, uh, if it is from the north side near the K1 crater, reaching the Grindavik in one and a half hour, or a very quick one if it erupts near the Hagofall or flows near the Hagofall and reaches in half an hour the Grindavik uh, between the storm of the earthquakes and the next. Interesting enough, the last time we had 60 million tons of the magma on the 29th of May, on the same day we had the eruption. That is the video that I have and I will show you now. The similarities are stunning. With the continuous tremors, which are the indicators of the movements of the plates along the uh, Reckoners Peninsula of Iceland, we are seeing the accumulation of the magma practically due to the creation of the voids in the ground. We have now uh, 20 million cubic meters of the magma under the Swartzengi. That is 60 megatons of the uh, basaltic uh, uh, magma in that area. They create a change in the pressure in the boreholes and movements in the seals and dikes. You need shaking to uh, have the catch up out of the bottle. The same applies to the magma under the ground. Earthquakes create that shaking. It makes it flow. It helps it flow. And then we see this uh, uh, little earthquakes, which are actually helping the flow of it rising to the surface of the magma. When it reaches the surface, this will go easily through the cracks between the, uh, you know, to, in the area east of the uh, Swartzengi. There are plenty of cracks. This is shown also on this hazard map. On the color of the pink, you can see that this is the area which has the maximum number of the cracks, the pathways for the magma to erupt to the surface. This is the Grindavik Rift Valley we are talking about. Fault lines both sides of it is controlled, and the magma can move from uh, sourcing a uh, reservoir to that area and erupt. This is the update that we have about this volcano.